six laps is a long old race and the last thing you want to be doing is wrestling it. It's not impossible to, to, to wrestle a bike for that duration safely around here. When you click fifth and sixth gear, things change and um, there is nothing you can do to prepare for that. It's incredible what you can do mentally if, uh, if needed. Hello and welcome to Off Track, powered by Rich Energy. I'm your host, Dave Neal, and I'm absolutely delighted to say our own Rich Energy OMG Racing Yamaha rider, James Hillier, joins us. James, welcome to the show, mate. Thank you. It's a, it's a bouncy introduction, isn't it, you yeah. see? This is how we do it. It's what we on Tuesday afternoon. We're nice and relaxed. We've had a day off. We've been out and about with the family and just having a bit of a chill time. How are you doing? All right. Yeah, no, it's um, just... Just it's important to try and get a bit of a distraction and get out from the paddock and change the scenery a little. But um, really, we're, I'm here to race, and obviously, I'm here to race. And it's I don't I don't ever like to be too far away from the paddock, you know, just to keep in with the boys who are working on the bikes and the you know, the preparation and things never stops really for uh, for the races we have coming up, and it's. Um, yeah just doesn't stop if even if i'm out on the other part of the island doing something different i'm always thinking in the back of my mind of what i could do better or what i need to pre be prepared for the next day you know um visors and kit and so on drinks and things so never really stops we're first year on the yamaha for yourself um northwest 200 we did a couple of uh bsb rounds as well how's the transition gone from the kawasaki to the yamaha uh <coughs> good really I, I you know i was never really uh worried about a transition because you know i think the especially coming back here to the tt the biggest the biggest issue was the the the, the time we hadn't ridden the circuit you know it wasn't um the, the the change of machinery and as the week's gone on it's probably the bikes come into it a little bit more in in the, the the i mean we haven't had loads of laps in practice if i'm honest like compared we've had definitely had better tts for practice laps um and that was probably the only disadvantage is on the kawasaki uh we had a lot of data from all the previous years so we could nigh on hit the ground running every tt so as i got used to the track and um started feeling a bit more natural when the speed was coming a bit better um then the bike settings and setup became more apparent but it's it's no big drama you know that's a, ultimately that is um the, <coughs> the the importance of having a good crew around you to get the bike set as quickly as possible so you can um not waste time and laps in riding a bike that's not set right you've got an experienced crew around you they know you well and you know them well that must be vitally important coming into this year especially having had a couple of years off as well for sure and that was from the beginning you know from the very beginning of my kind of time with rich and omg um that was the kind of <coughs> line of uh of our forthcoming really with 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 building the team around really what i wanted and who, who as best as we could as who i wanted to to give us and keep us in the best position possible. We were always going to be slightly on the back foot coming with a, um, a new bike, which um, but I think we've done pretty good, to be honest. And, and the best, I think, is yet to come. The 600 is that with less power, it's easier to set a, a bike up. Um, the bigger bike is <coughs> trickier, you know, to try and control that 220 odd horsepower and, 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 and put that down to the tarmac and, 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 in a in a, f a, f a friendly way really it's uh that's the best word for it um you know because you can uh, it's it's hard here is all about riding making the bike as rideable and, and easy to ride as, as possible it's uh six laps is a long old race and um the last thing you want to be doing is wrestling it for that <laughs> it's not impossible to, to to wrestle a bike for that duration safely around here so yeah it's important to have it have it right you did a couple of early rounds of the of the British Superbike Championship just to get a bit of time on the bike, and it, you can't really transfer what goes on at Alton Park and places like that to to here. So going to the Northwest, 
I think we had a, a pretty good time at the Northwest, I think, compared to how everything was quite new, but getting yourself up to speed, literally up to speed, back on a motorcycle after so long and being out in the desert, which we'll come to later. What, what's it been like sort of recalibrating the brain to the speeds again? Um, harder than I... You know, the actual physics of riding a motorcycle, I, I, you know, it, it's the saying is, you just like riding a bike, you don't forget that part of it, but acclimatise into the the sheer speed. And, and, and Northwest is quick, but it's open, it's smoother, it's all breaking in a straight line. There's not a lot of fast combo turns, you know, and technical sections. It's pretty basic. Um, so coming here was uh i mean it is always a shock even year on year or ever even sort of eight months when we we do the classic tt on the slower bikes but um it, it's the 600 isn't too bad but the the super bike and super stock bikes thousand cc's when you when you click fifth and sixth gear things change and um there is nothing you can do to prepare for that you know you can do you could do a million laps on any short circuit and it wouldn't make a blind split difference to 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 that that wow factor of clicking fifth and sixth down Bray Hill first lap and it, your your head falls off. You know, it's just a, as the practice week goes on, it's a case of slowly trying to <laughs> caress your head back and <laughs> put it back on and recalibrate and slowly, you know, accept that that's what you've got to do. And it's uh, I always I think I would say speaking for every rider, you kind of you doubt yourself you know the first night of practice you think well bugger me i'm never going to be able to do 130 mile an hour because you, you your head's gone at 124 125 and it just feels <laughs> bonkers so um but uh and then it completely turns and changes by the end of race week um it you want more you know it, it almost feels slow in some sections you know you're full throttle and you're thinking come on you want a bit more gas so it uh, it's, it always it's, it's it's hard to it's very it would be very hard for someone to fully appreciate but i i struggle to understand how uh, and it always amazes me how how the human how my brain and other riders brains adapt you know it's incredible what the, the your, your what you can do mentally if uh if needed and it's something that you obviously do have to do because you, you go and you say even the difference of going from a, a 124 lap to go up to the 129 as we did on saturday um, the difference in just doing that to try and compute of how to do it how much more effort do, do you feel that you put into it or does it just come naturally that you end up going quicker are you consciously going quicker is that um, a, the right question um, it's a scale really it kind of balances out in the middle um, and and then it comes back again so it gets easier to a point and then, and then it shock you. Almost shock yourself a little. You think, well, geez, that didn't feel like that lap time. It actually felt pretty easy. And then you keep going, and then it starts getting hard again when you're trying to scratch those last bits. So, yeah, throughout the fortnight, it's sort of like that. It gets easier a bit in the middle, and then it gets harder again as you kind of go over that wave and start then chasing that next bit of time. What's it been like going back fast on a motorcycle again? Uh, it's been a while. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's. Uh, I, I, Again, I, I, I often struggle. You know, I'm not probably the best with words, but uh, it, it, I can't. I don't think there is a word for this place. But it, 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 it. Uh, I don't know. I, do, I just. It's just. Uh, I nearly swore. It's just like. <laughs> it's just good. You know, it like. I. For me, anyway. You know, everyone gets off on different stuff and different things appeal to them but for when the grin and the the feeling inside when we first set off for that first lap on um, first practice sunday last week and uh it was just like there's not a single place or position in the whole entire world that i'd rather be other than than riding around there you know it like i wouldn't trade it for anything that first feeling when you think wow you know it like it's it, yeah un uh, unbelievable yeah I know we, we were quite privileged to, to chat to you after the first practice on, on Sunday evening and you allowed us just to get a quick video literally 10 minutes after you would got off the bike, which I thought was a bit too soon, but you were kind enough to do it. And 
one thing that won't won't ever leave me from that was you re- the grin and the look on your face was like what on earth have I just done? But you were so happy at the same time. Yeah, and it doesn't. It, yeah, it's like a, a buzz. You know, it's a bit that, that I, I don't know what the chemicals are that your body releases, but you know, it like nothing ever comes close to that. You know, it's like a it's a it's a combination of like. I've done something that probably was almost illegal. You know, it doesn't feel like you should be doing what we've just done. And I, I, again, I, 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 there isn't really a word or, or three words that you could use to totally nail it. It just, it just, and I think I was speaking to someone else this week in another interview, and it's, it's kind of like this secret kind of feeling that we can't talk about, but we all share. Do you know what I mean? You don't ever, and you look at the other riders, and we all, we all know it, but we don't. You can't talk. You know what I mean? You, yeah. You just know. We, if you you know, you know, and you can't really. It's a TT rider thing. You, yeah. There's only you guys know that yeah. feeling. We can't replicate it. Sat here, the guys that are helping us out with the filming, um, the off-brand guys. Nobody can understand that. Only you that sit up on the Glen Crutchy Road and and get the tap. Totally. You know it. Uh, yeah. I guess it's a bit like a little like the special forces, the SAS guys that go on those secret bloody missions and they can't talk about it but they you know but they know they each of them know they what goes on you know and it um it's a roller coaster you know this fortnight is a true well it starts way before the roller coaster starts way before the event but uh it's a true uh, you know ride of emotion and physical feeling and you know you go from feeling sick to ecstatic and sick again and scared and exhilarated you know it just uh, all over the place you know it uh and i don't think there's anywhere else you can get all of that in one place and i think one thing that's happened again this week of, of the two races you've contested with the superbike race and the super sport race i think from memory that 62 starts 58 finishes mm. is an incredible record that you have around yeah. here yeah that's and that's that's something else to me that you know um it's a long you know, a credit to the team they have to build a good bike but um i think the rider is it's in the rider's hands as well to look after that bike so you have to a prepare it and and, and feedback well throughout practice week and um almost try and break it in or, or highlight weak spots i guess uh in practice but um but also ride and respect it throughout a race because you know i've i've uh in in 18 i i broke the bike got greedy and and pushed too hard through bagaro and took the sump out which it's kind of a you know i sh- shouldn't really have done that the time that would have gained me or I, you know if i'd have just gone a little slower i could have lost a couple of tenths or half a second and i'd have you know i'd have still been in the race but uh just asked a bit too much and paid the price you know so it's uh but that's a you know that, that's big credit to the team and I'll, as a rider without blowing my own trumpet i'll take a little bit of credit because you know there's a few races there i could have definitely quit i've, I've finished around here then i could have pulled out but we've found a way to finish and just got to the end you know i think there's a lot of there has to be a lot of mechanical sympathy in that as well and understand a mechanical understanding which you have that is is testament to a good number of those finishes yeah yeah you know even from from the drop of the flag i'm kind of listening and feeling the bike to 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 let it tell me if there if it's not happy or a vibration or a, a, an electrical or something i haven't felt before you you you've got to be totally open to anything you know and uh I, and and just think things through you know it's people think we're bloody loony bins out there on you know but um, I can assure you, you if you were some some fruitcake nugget that I had no, you know, you you wouldn't come back or you wouldn't finish that many races. You know, you have to be on the ball in all aspects. You know, and that's why I think that when people say, "Oh, you must be a, a lunatic to um, to do this," he's absolutely. Com- is completely the wrong end of the scale because you have to have that intelligence and ability and confidence in what you do to actually take it on in the first place. It's it's calculated risk. Yeah, uh, I mean the whole 
thing is calculated and that that the only uncalculated bit and i and that worries me and i know up from other riders is the third party influence of a you know this week we've had someone on a skateboard a helmet rolling in the road and and a football in the road you know that's i've not witnessed any of them myself but i've seen the videos and that's the stuff that's that frightens me Every, everything within my control or i i i have 100 percent confidence that i can i'm riding within my ability and my machinery and surroundings but um you know that that's my worry here is a uh, something i don't have control of affecting my time on track and putting me in a position i, I i'm out of control of that has been the difficult thing for this week certainly that we've not really experienced before um after three years away and in maybe different clientele different people coming in who aren't maybe used to it and it, everybody's happy to be back there's no doubt about it but to to have to deal with objects in this on the on the course is, is beyond belief for, for this year um so how much have you en- enjoyed being back amongst the paddock and amongst the riders and back out on circuit it's, 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 it's what you live for isn't it most of the time yeah i would I, if I'm totally honest, I like I, I, it's so good to be back here, especially like today with the sun's out and the the paddock has this magical sort of atmosphere. I I struggle a little with like the the demand a little bit from the which I totally understand is the 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 f- fan side of it is sometimes it takes a lot longer to get something done if I'm trying to get from A to B, but it uh, that's part part of the TT, you know. You just gotta you know it is open and. Uh, you know that again makes the TT what it is. So you just got to ride through it, and 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 you know it's part of the package. You know, but ultimately I come here for the the riding and the racing, and albeit that's not getting any easier. But um, you know, even the other night we we're out for dinner, and you get you get people from all over the world, and they or they were, I think there were some Germans in the restaurant, weren't there? And they were. You know, they I, I almost envied them. They're they're you know they've they've waited for this as long as we have for these three years, and They've the planning and excitement that have had building up to to riding here. They would have got two ferries and ridden here, and I, you know I look I I think even past the racing, you know, for me racing here, whether I would be involved with a team or or even just to come as a spectator, it I, I it's just a cool place, you know. We're like um, and I, I yeah I, I I sort of almost envied their their situation, you know. I know some people probably envy my situation being a, a rider, but it's just there's so many just amazing little parts of this puzzle that make it what it is and um i th- I, I just magic it's it's just so unique and and just i still pinch myself that we're here you know it was quite 12 so t- you know 25 years ago i was here as a kid walking around and doing exactly what some of these kids are doing now you know chasing autographs and being inspired i guess when the time comes for for you to hang up the the leathers from the road racing side of things, would you still come back with the family? Is it still going to be in your blood? Do you think? <laughs> yeah. Or I, could uh, you not do it? Would that just be a little bit? No, I think I I don't know till I get there. But it would I I it, I really look forward to 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 that part of life of of, of coming here. Um, although it may be hard in some ways, but having I it it. it you'd still get a lot out of it i you know i would still get a lot out of it and you know i think there's potential to obviously be involved somewhere maybe in the paddock but i look forward to one year just coming back and doing the whole holiday thing and coming with some mates maybe on dirt bikes or on the c90s and camping getting drunk just and enjoying it you know it uh it's it's a special place and yeah i I don't know till i get there but um i'll i'll I, I couldn't imagine not coming here in one way or another with with whatever reason to, to be here, whether it's racing, working or spectating. Could you see yourself mentoring another rider? I would like to, I would take a lot from that, I think. I, I, you know, it would give me quite a bit of pride, I think. To, and, and also, I know other riders sort of do it, but um, I think it would almost be a waste if I didn't, you know, because one thing you can't beat here is experience. And it would be... I would hate to sort of waste some of my experience, I guess, by not sharing that with others and 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 giving them a chance to feel and 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 maybe leapfrog a few areas where I maybe not necessarily learnt the hard way, but you know, just allow help people do it 
safely as possible, I guess, and, and not, you know, I, I often see in newcomers over the years that have come and maybe got a bit greedy or not quite seen things maybe how they should have and they, they, they maybe have a bad experience and never come back, you know. I think uh, it's... Yeah, I, I think I would take quite a bit from being a, a helping other riders come through or newcomers learning the course and things. You know, it would be that would be quite uh, give me quite a bit of return and 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 nice. There's a few to go at as well, and when you look at some of the young lads coming through, you look at Davy Todd, who's still in his mid twenties, Nathan Harrison, who's had a great couple of races. There's a lot of good, fast young talent coming through. Who do you see as, as taking your mantle on when the time comes to put the leathers <laughs> back in the box? Well, I, don't, um, I think certainly Davies, you know, uh, for for only his third TT, he's he, um, he clearly no doubt of his ability on a motorcycle is, is is strong. You know what he's doing on the short circuit and and here and 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 I'd definitely say here in the last sort of three years that the 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 style has turned here. You know, it is for sure. You know, it's never been easier easy to win a race here, but the the it was definitely five years ago it was a bit easier to get a top six say you know the depth of the field now is is super strong which um <laughs> it's t it's tough as a racer you know because you you can't afford to have an off day really and it's uh you know every millisecond counts from as soon as that flag drops through the pit stops and to the checkered flag you've got to hang it out all out you know and go maximum effort i think years ago you know you'd see races won by over a minute and uh, in 17 I finished fourth and I was I think 16 seconds off the win so that after six laps which is crazy you know um, I've, over that duration it uh, and, and I've missed out on podiums by tenths of a second so you know it, uh, you, it's it um, but I think coming through obviously Davey Nathan um and there's a there's a few other sort of off the radar which um I don't know a lot about but they but I quite like the fact they're off the radar and they're not making a thing of themselves being here they're just doing the homework and going through the motions and and uh I I like that way that's sort of how I did my apprenticeship and I like I like that kind of style really just come up and and do your talking on the track really when when the time comes but uh, you know especially the younger guys there's no there's no rush here when John and Michael are still riding around at 52 or whatever they are now. Are they, uh, <laughs> it, um, you know, I think, I think come here for the, the long term rather than a, a short term and rush a quick fix. You know, you need to learn, take your time. And it's important to maximum respect with this place. Has the pace surprised you this year? Not really. No, I know it's going to be bloody hard and, you know, Michael did an incredible lap there on the 600 race, which, you know, uh, I don't really know what to say about that. But <laughs> no, um, not many people do with 129.4. Uh, incredible, and uh, I don't. Uh, it's just, um, I think it. I don't really. It, it's just tough. You know, it is hard, and if, it, the whole package has got to be right here. You know, you could have an mate, you could have the best bike, but if you haven't got the best the combination of the bike, the team, the rider, and the, even the little things like where you sleep in, who's doing what with your bikes, and, you know, it, everything has to be, every cog has to line up and work correctly in motion here. The timing has to be perfect with it all. If something's amiss, then it, you know, it, uh, it'll be a compromise somewhere in the whole package, you know? Talk to us about the two races you've had so far. We've done the Superbike race on Saturday and we had the um, the Supersport race on Monday. Talk uh, us through those. God, it seems a long while ago, actually, already. It the feels Superbike it, doesn't race. It? Yeah, so six laps is never, ever easy round here. But uh, it was bloody nervous, to be honest, Saturday morning. Um, never, I don't think I've ever been that nervous. For, I think because of the break, I just kind of forgot maybe how to mentally fall into it you know um but once the you know i, I felt so i woke up i felt sick i was like shit this you know i never never felt that and uh but as, as soon as the flag dropped i was good and just at the laps up really it was pushed on but we were you can't force it well i can't i know some riders can ride around a problem here and and uh still find the pace regardless but um 
we actually started quite well and then the pit stop first pit stop we lost a chunk of time and my I didn't really control my emotion that well I don't think and it, it got to me a little and I overrode after the pit stop and then the you might as, you almost might as well pull in then you know it just uh, fell apart and um, not too bad we finished seventh so shouldn't be disappointed with that but I know we we've got better in us than that so you know we get another chance Friday to redeem ourselves there but uh, yeah and then Super Sport again I was I had my back up a bit with this super stock situation and um, was hungry, but I, I felt I had a real good start to the lap and I, I haven't really looked how close it was, but, you know, I first pit ball was P5 and I was a, wanted to see a top, you know, P, P top three, really. Um, uh, and then Michael came past and and uh, managed to cling on, really. We had an amazing first... Um, pit stop which gave us a bit extra time and uh and then held on again with michael when he came back past you know he was on lap record pace and probably would have been race record pace had it been four lap race and um just didn't quite have the edge to hang with him if i had of then it would have been a guaranteed podium but uh you know that's something to focus on again for tomorrow now i can take some negatives on that you know positives are we had a good pit stop the bikes in the ballpark setting wise we're we are making no changes to the bike um uh we just try again you know i i uh time will tell hopefully a little bit of lady luck on our side and another strong pit stop um we can get in that winner's enclosure it was fa was it not the fastest pit stop of the race was it 27 something do something, i remember right something crazy like that you know i i, I remember just had being like mid drink uh slurping away and they they were shouting me to get ready so you know it caught me out almost you know i was sort of wasn't quite ready to uh to go but uh we we, we did it and, and made some time up which was which was good which after the superbike race it, it was almost a repayment from that which is it was a difficult stop but then to have the guys do what they did for the super sport race that's uh, it's almost as a there you go we Can, take it you're yeah. not ready but you're going yeah yeah no it was it was it was good and that you know i i've lost podiums and and, and, and actually lost a, a win here in 17 because of a crappy pit stop refueler and uh so but we sort of you win you win some and lose some here and i think i think every rider could probably say they've their final position has been uh, dictated by winning or losing a bit of time in the pits so We'll just see, just see what tomorrow brings. But I'm, I, uh, I, I know what we can do. Yeah. I've just got to do it, bring the race together, and join all my markers up. And uh, uh, and if we can do it, then it will be, uh, it will be a good feeling. Come Friday tea time, what would make you would you let you leave here on Saturday dinner, Saturday afternoon? What would what would have to happen over the next two races for you to leave here satisfied with your fortnight's work? Um, relatively satisfied would be a podium. Fully satisfied a win. Um, that's that's you know that would be and well that would be well deserved because the, the the field is strong. But uh, I would like to in the Subak race try and better my personal best and try and get in the one thirty threes, which I th we have the potential for. It's just it's just bringing it all together and um, find that little magic number with the bike setting the bike's fast enough it's uh it's just um the hat the chassis so we but we we uh we working on that and and hopefully you can get a warm-up lap on the bike tomorrow just to test that moving away from the tt and the roads talk to me about the, the rally talk about the off-road because that's fast i don't know too much about that i used to watch the paris dakar when i was a kid um, and I, I kind of have an idea of how it works. But what was the attraction to go rally raid? Um, I think because it's just a bloody hard race, you know. I like I like to, <laughs> weirdly, I quite, I don't know if I enjoy it, the, the actual motion of going through something tough. I don't think I do, but it's the satisfaction of completing it or getting to the end, you know, against the odds. That's, I like, I like, I like, um, it's almost like when someone says you can't do that and I, and you, I just want to prove them wrong, you know, it's all it's about the challenge, determination and, uh, hunger, I guess you just got to, 
um david knight's over there they're talking of rally racing is uh <laughs> he's he, he did dakar last year so um yeah i'll be picking his brain a little but uh, it, I, I think it's, it's a case of doing something that's not 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 you know there's there's always in a lot of things i look at not it, normal not normal but also <laughs> there's always excuses not to do stuff or a reason not to do something. So I like to not necessarily find a reason to do it, but I, I just don't like excuses. You know, I'd rather soldier th through and uh, just be out of my comfort zone, I guess. We did the rally of Andalusia last summer mm -hmm. um, on the podium in the newcomers, which is an incredible. Got that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'll remind you. Yeah. Um, things have moved on since then, obviously. But th for your first ever official, and it was qualifying for the Dakar for this year, which unfortunately we, we didn't take um, the option on that. But to go and do that rally raid with a new crew, you got the experience of Derek, who is vast experience. We've, we've christened him Dakar Derek these last couple of weeks because that's what he does. Um, but taking yourself and Derek and Darren out there to go and do that and to bring back the result you did was was pretty special on your first attempt. Yeah, and I, yeah, I probably some of the rally, you know, it was all new to me that the whole navigation thing was quite new to me. And I probably some looking back on some some stages, I think I rode too fast because not really at my limit, but or beyond my limit, but um, or ability, but um, uh, just maybe a little bit too much risk, perhaps, considering the situation we just had to get to the finish. But I think in some sections I ha if you're not f riding hard and fully concentrated your mind would more well, my mind would wonder and I'd start thinking about stupid stuff and not really concentrating where I was so I was almost safer riding fast fully focused on what I was doing rather than taking my time and uh, thinking about dinner or you know whatever stuff so <clears throat> which on the other rally which we did in February Abu Dhabi Desert Challenge I I that that was a new thing again being off piste in the dunes in the sand but i um that one i took a step back a little bit with pace and constant you know just tried to rest a little bit more that was a longer rally definitely more physical but uh uh i, I wasn't chasing a position oh, well, not that i was uh, uh, and lucia chasing a uh, position but um I, I don't know i just took a little bit of a different mentality to that one and um you know, it was more for safety, I think, because, um, you know, Andalusia was a lot of gravel tracks and dirt roads, a bit like following a sat-nav lefts and rights, whereas in the desert there was a lot of turns we had to make off on compass reading, but also the big drops, which, um, you know, you could really, really hurt yourself incredibly badly very quickly. Things can go from okay to terrible immediately, and... Uh, <coughs> So I think I kind of rolled off a little there with that one just to be super safe uh, from any drops or danger zones, I suppose. Did you manage to read them quite well or were there a couple of times where you suddenly went, ah! um, No, no I, I, I was on the road, but, you know, all the time. I missed one waypoint on the last day. Um, but there was there was a section where we crossed like another track and there was, lor there was these old lorries driving down this sandy road and it was a bit caught me out a little bit and then uh there was a few bikes riding around in circles i think a few guys missed this waypoint but yeah that i i i would say you know honestly that some of the sand dunes they they're not they're mountains they're not dunes they're they're like and and it would be like riding off that tower the top of that tower with some of them you I can't quite you know a little bit like spectating here you can't uh i can't tell you you'd have to see it to fully think wow you know um, and the TV and onboards don't at all do it justice. So, um, yeah, and, and, and once you've ridden up to one of those drops, you know, um, you don't want to, it makes you realise that I do not want to uh, <coughs> outdo one of these and find myself flying 100 foot up in the air. So um, I think the whole, a little bit like racing around here, the whole risk factor is constantly there. You know, you're aware of the potential risk and dangers of drops and stuff. So... Um, another reason why I think I just rolled off a little bit at, uh, in the Abu Dhabi rally. 
I must mention Paul Curran and John Lee were out with you on the Andalusian rally because I don't want to name check anybody that that, that, that I've missed out. Who else was there? So there was Dakar Derek, there was Ginger da- Dave, Ginger Dave, Daz Baker, da- Daz Barker, Paul and John Boy. Yes, so that's, yeah. a, that's, that's, a, that's a good strong crew, and, and a lot of them work with you here. Yeah, I think th- they was on the um, road. I think it was a little bit to. I mean, then we didn't have the full plan in place of who was going to be doing what, but uh, so we took the more than we needed. They were well, there wasn't much thumb twiddling but they all enjoyed it and, and and all got a taste of it to kind of um you know going forward um a couple of them will be coming with us when we go dakar so it uh but it was a good team experience you know it was new for them early starts and bike preparations different a little bit like here you know you have to build the bike bulletproof really and and plan ahead with uh, carrying what spares to take with you in case you break a lever or whatever and uh air filters and so on you know it's um quite a lot of forward planning a little bit like this job there's a lot of similarities from what i can do with how you approach the rally to how you approach here let's say it's risk management it's knowing how far you can push and, and what you can and can't do what preparations did you do in terms of of orientation map reading navigation that kind of was there much you could do or just learn the symbols on the on the scroll um <clears throat> it's hard again a little like here with the fact you can't fully prepare for that I, I learned the symbol as best I could and had plenty of questions for the guys with experience but you can't beat time in the saddle read in the road book so I did two days out with uh, Lyndon Poskett uh, in Spain and um, it was quite funny because the you know the first the first half a day I missed I'd not missed markers but I found myself stopping I'd missed bits and pieces and then it kind of almost just clicks and then you can process them together and and it and it kind of works you know you 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 start with your peripheral like this you know taking everything in um and then as you learn what you do and naturally don't need to read you're not reading everything on the road but you're just reading the the distance maybe a particular symbol for a pylon you'll so you look for a pylon or after the road you turn you know you just you just you you focus on the information you actually need over kind of um trying to process everything and a lot of that information you you don't actually need to know you know it has a purpose being there but it's not detrimental to you know it's uh which again only comes with experience and i've got a lot more still to learn with that but uh <clears throat> yeah it was interesting and and, and very tiring because your brain's in working overload to read the road read the road book and then translate that to what your body's reacting to stuff and taking in what the bike's doing and road you know thinking of fuel and food and have a drink and geez someone's behind me or you know catching that guy look out for that and this and you know it doesn't it's intense for you know some of the days i think the longest day may have been eight eight hours you know in the saddle so long time yeah yeah with a lot going on it uh you sleep pretty good (laughs) in the bivouac yeah 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 when's the next one do we know have we got anything planned in yet before the dakar uh no we sort of it's open at the moment we're not nothing set but uh we'll be doing something yeah maybe november time uh don't know what yet but um uh yeah we, ha- we have to do another one really before dakar just to recap a little bit and um you know because it would be almost a year since i did by then since the abu dhabi race so <coughs> it um we just wait and see what the, the there's a few on the calendar but uh um down to to Derek really sort of managing that side of the racing and um and organizing it with Paul to to get it set and, and organized in place just to come back with a couple more questions to finish off um as far as as the, the TT course goes what's your favorite section and why uh it changes each year i would say a little bit just um this quite enjoy the end of cronky body this year and then the the 11th just after that a right and two lefts if you if you get that good then it's pretty satisfying it's quite hard a, a, a right fifth gear on the 600s fifth gear um followed by double apex left two lefts as one really but uh you know it's that's a nice feeling if you can get that good <coughs> Uh, I try not to kind of have favourite no. places if I want to I try and just have it all as one 
because I don't I've always had the the, the mentality of not uh, I don't want to be approaching a section thinking oh sh- sh- shit this is like that bit that I don't really like you know it's Which just fair it's just for me it's just that's that section that, that's that bit you know and the final question anybody who listens to the podcast knows what the final question is what's your best hire car story James <laughs> um, oh, there's a few uh, I know uh, you've got a few they're um one actually probably I wasn't even in the driver's seat I was in I was co-driving and uh, we were driving we would we would just well I was in I had quite a lot of influence over the Phil Biggs the the guy we've had here crew chief in and it was a Toyota Yaris and I had I felt yeah the old Japanese cars were pretty bulletproof but and I suppose they are to a degree (laughs) depends what you um, do to them James yeah and uh, so we were we were we were finding the boundaries of the downshift, um, <laughs> and uh, eloquently put. Yeah, yeah, and uh, um, yeah, we found found the limit. Where was it, it that way? Well, I don't remember what speed we went were doing, but it it, it went into first gear weirdly um, until the clutch was released, and then all the engine components <laughs> fell out the bottom, and uh, <laughs> and. Um, left a very broken Toyota Yaris and confused um, recovery man I don't think he'd ever seen anything like it <laughs> and uh, and uh, numerous letters and so on luckily we had the full com- um, which is compulsory any race team I think always has no full question. insurance um, on the hire car but uh, yeah there was a few letters there was a bit of a mi- mix up with the license and driver's address or something because I was getting letters to my house but in Phil's name and I, I was like, well, I don't. I was just put them in the bin, as you always do. First, first two went in the bin, <laughs> and then the third one was threatening court and this and that. And anyway, we got uh, nothing happened. We got away. It, it was brushed over, and um, we just don't go with gold car anymore. <laughs> <laughs> we don't go near the near the office. We no, just, no, no. Like, <laughs> that's a big no no. Stay well, away what, from. What yeah. past that one? Yeah. <laughs> James Hillier, thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it, mate. Best of luck for the rest of the week. Two more races to go. Let's see how we go, and we wish you all the very best for it. Thank you very much. 